Welcome to Construction Time with Chaffron Construction. My name is Jordan and we'd like to show you one of our projects that we are currently working on over here in beautiful Los Angeles. It's raining right now, but it's not going to stop us from proceeding with the final product over here. So let's take a look. Yesterday, we poured the sidewalk with 2500 PSI concrete mix with three bar lateral ties and we did an epoxy injection with doweling into the existing curb and the driveway. As you can see, the concrete color, even though it's a standard gray, will look a little bit different than the weathered gray. So moving forward, we'll start taking a look at what we're doing over here. If you can follow me. Over here, Mario is working on a side block wall. This is a planter wall, and it was shifting because of these tree roots. So what we're doing now, we are regrouting and realigning all the concrete blocks. These are standard 8x8x12 eight by eight by cinder blocks. And we're going to be grouting them, and as you can see, Mario is getting the right level. Beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful. And we're not going into the footing, even though the footing is shifted. We're just doing a cosmetic fix. So let's keep on moving forward. We will see our progress. Later down the line, we're going to work on the driveway if the client decides to. As you can see right now, through shifting and settling, the concrete slab has lifted, as you can see, off the standard ground elevation and as we can tell there are no rebar ties the code with concrete drivers usually we see that rebar number three which is three eighths in diameter is used let's move forward Hector is working right now on the stuccoing process so basically we are lathing the exterior of the house with the black paper Lathing nets. The lathing nets allow for the stuck or especially the scratch, which is the first coat, to stick onto the wall. Once it hardens and cures, then we can continue with the brown portion of the application, which is the second portion, and then finally the finish, which is the color coat. There's still debris in the side yard, so we might use the entrance hallway or the other side yard, but we do have dry rot in the eaves and the way that we get rid of dry rot or termite is we have to completely replace the wood now we can see that the fascia board which is this board the continuation was removed the inside is called the eaves now the eaves also have been compromised in some sections so therefore we have to, the only way to get to the eaves is to lift up the roof line and get to the eaves by removing them from, from the upper part of the roof and reinstalling them. These are tongue and groove slots. These are about, um, about the half an inch by six inches. As you can tell over here, back to the stucco application, at the bottom of the stucco, four, usually four inches away from the footing, is the weep screen. And that's where the water comes down to, retains and slips down. So this is important for any stucco application. Now what we're doing over here, this is an 8,000 square foot lot. This house, uh, the foot plate is about 2,000 square feet. And we have about a month to completely renovate the entire backyard, front yard, side yards, and everything inside the house, as you'll see. New windows, these are nail-on windows. So they're extending all the way to the studs. Some windows are retrofit. There is a difference where they, they're just plugged in like Legos. These are different. In the garage, we're gonna do some other work, but right now we're limited with 
the sunlight, so we're going to continue and we'll review this later. Okay. We have our electrical soffit lighting and scan sliding that's in place before we install it. Moving forward, new 36 inch four doors with the design. These are actually metal plated for the correct fire rating according to this to the city uh, scope and building and safety regulations. Any exterior door needs to have a fire rating, obviously in case of a fire. Looking at the trim still have more have more dry light and termite and the way that you can determine termite is you can see that the wood is eating away you can kind of see the crevices of the wood the striations and it's eaten away and it just breaks in your hand so if I go into it I can just peel it this takes away the strength and the integrity of the wood and as you can see it could be caused by nails that weren't galvanized to begin with even the plywood board. Once termite or dry rot infects a certain section and you don't replace it, and we don't really believe in treating because treating is kind of like putting a band-aid on a problem. We want to remove any infected piece of wood. So in this case, we have to go all the way up to the chimney flute and remove all of the wood that's encasing it. As you can see, the eaves, are also affected due to that penetration. Now this backyard, and you're gonna see in previous pictures and videos, was covered with vegetation all the way up. The back fence was, was shifted and we peeled it back and now we put one primer coat on just a portion of the section. When you deal with weathered or any type of brown wood before you paint it you have to send it down prep it correctly fill in the gaps and grooves and holes and then apply a very thick primer we like to use a zinser cover stain product we like to put at least two to three coats and then at least three coats of a very high end such as an Evershield Don Edwards product. And that will give you a very good finished look. Moving forward, we're still in the rain. Again, it's not gonna stop us. We have to cover the whole back of the house with, we have the lathing, so now we have to have the wire installed. And again, the wire holds the stucco application. Clients have asked us for a recommendation for the pool. Now, well, you can always replaster, replastering in our county probably cost you about seven to ten thousand dollars depending on the application and depending on, on the finish of plastering. And the way to replaster is to basically break away and chip away all of this old plaster. As you can see, we we took a pressure washer with a very high intensity just to clear out all the peeling paint. And we believe that the plaster at this point is in pretty good condition. It's in decent condition. Therefore, we can refinish it with a priming method. And we're gonna use a very thick epoxy blade material to cover the surface of the pool. As you can see, this is the coping. Now, this is not, this type of coping is not really recommended if you have little kids because when they walk up and they're in the pool and they want to climb out, they can cut themselves. We definitely recommend some type of a bull nosed um, coping that extends a little bit into the pool. And on the bottom of the coping, you can see this is a flagstone or slate design. Also, it's more of an aesthetic um, look rather than a, a functional look because, again, with kids, they can cut themselves and 
it's not a very safe type of a finish. But if, you know, for couples or, you know, other types of individuals that prefer this type of look, as you can see, it definitely gives a nice earthy uh, type of a finish. So again, the pool we're going to take a look at a little bit later. We still have dry rot and termite. We have to peel back the roof, as I explained, and rectify this entire situation. We have a lot of loose wire, and you might see this around homes. These wires, now this home was built in 1956, and it has old cable lines, electrical lines that aren't necessarily in use. So we want to go ahead and test every line and see if we need it or we don't. Now, because we are restuck on the house, we do have the option to run all these lines inside the structure, inside the framing of the walls. This way, when you're looking at the exterior finish, it doesn't have any loose wires hanging out. Okay? So, as you can see, we're not going to climb over this debris, but this is the pool equipment section. And we recommend it to encase it with some type of a gate and fence, maybe a redwood, maybe a vinyl. This way, when you're enjoying your pool, you're not looking at this eyesore portion of the yard. So for the side of the yard, I think that's, you can get a decent indication of once you have something that's pretty much, when we walked into this home, was destroyed from the inside and the outside wasn't kept and the pool was uh, swamped out, if you will, it was green and there were rats and what have you. So for now, I think that concludes the outside. Now let's walk inside. Okay, now we're facing the front of the house and we're going to walk in and see kind of what we've been doing and see if you have any questions. You can also contact us and see, you know, maybe you have some suggestions, questions or things you'd like answered. So moving into the house, we can definitely see that this is the courtyard. You have a couple of options for this courtyard. You can either have a sitting area with maybe some type of a stone or gravel or cement or any type of cement such as colored cement, stamped cement, um, or you can leave it as a grass area, maybe a fountain, or you can even build out the walls to have wainscoting and maybe stack stone. So you do have different options when you look at these specific areas. If you're looking to remodel, just keep your, keep your mind open for new ideas. New windows, we're good to go. Okay, so walking in into the hallway, if you focus the camera above, we can see that we reframed all the ceilings. The ceilings used to end up here. And when I came in, I said, wait, we can raise all the ceilings, we can realign all the vents and the ducting system, and you buy yourself another foot and a half to two feet of space, which gives it a more remodeled look, and obviously more space. Or if you're overly tall, it just makes sense. As you can see, we put the double French doors, they extend eight feet, the doors are six feet, and then we have the side panels. Now, we also had to reframe the top of the beam. This was basically an exterior load-bearing wall. There was nothing here. There was a door, I believe a double door, that extended on this end, if I'm not mistaken. So, as you can see, we ran the lights for sconces outside, both ends. And the ceiling, we had to drop the ceiling down because it was a tongue and groove, all the wooden ceiling from the 1950s. And the client needed sufficient lighting. So we dropped the ceiling by five inches, we framed it, and we installed drywall and placed the four inch recess cans. The four inch recess cans allowed us to work with, without so much, uh, yeah, the ceiling and still be able to give sufficient light as you can tell before we walked in there was only one um, canopy light that had a
inside of the fireplace, we will remove all of the all of the debris and repaint it with um, a paint that allows any type of fire to uh, burn without peeling. So it's a fireproof special paint that we use, but before we have to use a fireproof primer. We took out the original kitchen, and this is what we're faced with. After we re-plumbed and moved the plumbing to the middle of the window, this is actually a new window with new, with new framing. And the company that's uh, building the custom cabinetry came in and they advise us as to where they want all the plumbing, all the electrical lines, so everything fits with the right specifications. Again, the ceiling is dropped, but now it looks brand new before it's made. So have, once you have your window, you want to make sure it's centered by your sink. And once the sink is centered, then that will give you the location of your line. So the location of the lighting is above the sink, so it's overhead, and then we weighed in the entire line for the ceiling so it doesn't, it doesn't have to be too close to the cabinetry or away from the cabinetry. usually a vanity if you don't have a lake inside your bathroom. So we've changed and re-plumbed with copper piping all the way up to the mixing valve and the shower head and now we're going to install a standard white tub. We're going to plug it in and then we're going to start with the hardy back process to the back of the wall and basically that's how that's the board or cement board that's going to allow us for uh, for the installation of the tile we're going to stick and um, place the tile on the cement board which is called a hardy backer board okay so as far as the design, the clients picked out the design and we will review that and see what they went with. We also raised the, the ceiling, as you can tell. And just as I said in the kitchen, this is basically how we reframed all the ceilings in the house, or most of the ceilings in the house. This way, we could install a four inch can and still have sufficient lighting without any lines or flex lines running on the ceiling. We have new vents that came in. These are noise test tested vents, so they don't project too much noise. Because the last thing you want to do is watch a video when you're on the can, and there's too much noise and you can't enjoy it. Now, the cabinet maker that's making all the cabinets in the kitchen also is doing a custom vanity for this hallway bathroom. So they did ask us to move the plumbing line, as you can tell. This is the, the location where they want the pipes to meet, or the central drain. And the client wants us to place also a track light on the wall. And they don't want to go with any recess lights, but there will be one recess light over the toilet. And I think that's pretty much. Now this is a this is a uh, soap dish for the shower. Really, any shower nowadays. So there really isn't any place to place your shampoos, soaps, and whatnot. So we create. We go into the wall and we create a soap dish. And this way, you can put all your shampoo and conditioner bottles and soaps, and you can enjoy. The first bedroom on the left hand side. Standard bedroom, again, same deal with the ceiling. This is actually a good place to capture how we reframe this so you can get a good idea on both sections. This is the whole 
wood plank look from the 50s if you want to mo modernize and bring the house uh, you know to a more modern look then I would definitely suggest if if the ceilings are high enough to encase them and bring the ceilings down four to five inches and install some recess or can lighting going with the four inch remodeled cans. Now we're also placing receptacles in each wall. And now oh this is the hardy bag board that we were talking about. This is the cement board that goes up either on a shower wall or if you're floating a floor, can be used interchangeably. This Jack and Jill bathroom also for re-plumbing, completely new couple of plumbing. Behind, oh, this is our exterior load bearing wall. So we're adjusting to all the new specifications that the cabinet maker advised us to use. And we took down a, we took down a complete wall, as you can tell that was erected all the way up to this point and the client wanted us to create a pony wall where they can place a custom seamless um, glass door or glass panel. This way will give it a more modern look. Again, soap dish, drainage line that we had to move and you will see the shower coming up. The mixing valve will be at a waist high level, the older mixing valves, and a mixing valve is basically the unit that you use to open and close the water. Now, older mixing valves came down and they were installed a little bit lower, but nowadays, with all the hamburgers we eat, we're growing a little bit taller. We need to make sure that they're not knee high, they're about waist high. And then we have our shower heads that are also going to be extended. We're also going to install a recess light in the middle of this stand-up shower. And the recess light is a custom recess light where it has a glass buffle and trim finish. So if water hits it, it doesn't penetrate or cause a short. So that's important to know. We're also installing all new doors and these are two panel hollow core doors. You can buy them at Home Depot, they cost about eh, 25 to 40 dollars depending on who your cashier is and if you have a coupon. This is the second bedroom where again same type of application as we reviewed before, plug switches, new window, the new double French doors. These are six foot doors, each panel is three feet. We like for exterior wood doors, you want to make sure they're solid core, most doors are. And this is a paint grade, uh, I'm sorry, this is a stain grade finish which means that you can stain it. If you buy a paint grade, then you want to, usually it comes pre-primed. Where these doors, the stain grade, you can stain them in any color that you want, but they have to be bare wood. The third bedroom. are putting the drywall in. You're setting it and cutting it to the size of the wall. Let's step into this hallway that we created. And in this hallway, the client is going to install or have the cabinet maker install um, built-in closets. Or we might do it depending on the budget. But we created a soffit, framed out a soffit, and we're in a drywall, this whole soffit. There was a plumbing line over here that we had to close up because the client didn't want to run a sink or extend a bathroom or any type of water line. So we're just closing it up, we capped it. And now moving forward, this is the master bedroom. It's a really good size. Hey, Oscar. Hi. Hi. So, over here, as you can tell, pretty good size bedroom. And you can see the 
closet behind you, and it leads to the master, leads to the master bath. And Oscar's working on the plumbing, but you can also see the hardy backboard. Exactly. And what we've gone ahead and done, there was a French door here, but the client didn't feel like a French door was a right fit for this courtyard for safety issues. So we reframed the wall and installed a standard window. You want to stay away from custom windows because for another inch or two, it can cost twice or three times as much. So it's easier to frame up or down an exterior wall if you're doing some type of construction than just buying custom windows. We are placing HDMI connections on the wall with a tube. This way, if someone wants to plug a plasma TV on the wall, they'll be able to. And actually our client wanted to do it on two walls because he doesn't know if the new homeowner will prefer to put it on that side of the wall or on this side of the wall. We're planning for the bedroom to be on this way. Shaffron doesn't play games. This is a Shaffron soldier, just to be clear. So we're planning to have a California King bed. Hypothetically. So we're weighing in what any person would need. Well, a plug on each side so they can plug in a nice light. I love the hammering. And a switch. So if you read a book or if you went to school and you want to turn on the switch and read a book, you can do that without getting up or using a lamp. Now, we're also installing a three-way switch on this end. The three-way switch basically means that you can turn it on from another location as well. So from the entrance of that room, you will have a switch that you can turn on the light, and you can turn it off with this switch and vice versa. If that wouldn't be for these two lights, the overhead lights, it would be for the four recess lights in the bedroom section. So you can kind of get a rough visual of what we're doing. We've been doing this as long as I can remember, since 1988. He's still hammering. I don't think he's going to stop. And when you design any type of remodeling project. You want to make sure you weigh in the material, the labor, the time, and the guy hammering. That's the key component of the project. So we've been here for about three weeks. We have another week for the interior and maybe another week for the exterior, depending on if anything is added. And the clients have been doing different projects. So we're glad that you joined us. We're going to have, this is our first video, we're going to have many more videos to come of us explaining different projects. Feel free to ask us any questions or give us a call or subscribe to the channel. Um, we're definitely friendly, you know, easy to deal with, and if you need our help, we will be there. We work in Los Angeles, Orange County, Ventura County, and Kern County, all the neighboring counties around Los Angeles. But even if you call us from Idaho or Mississippi and you want some you know, design, you know, maybe you're dealing with something that you'd like to get an opinion, we'll be happy to help you. Just give us a call in time. My name is Jordan Chaffrin. You've been watching uh, Construction Time with Chaffrin Construction. Have a great day.